Right, so it's been a while. We've had a very, very busy summer and lots of people have been asking me how the XJ is going. All right, so look, the last time we saw the car uh, in a video, we had literally put the engine and gearbox in, we put the axles in and we were talking about running the fuel lines and, you know, just basically generally building stuff up and putting the electrics in and, you know, so the major units are in, but we still had a long way to go. So it has taken me a little bit longer than I anticipated to get as far as we are now. That's mainly been because uh, we've had some customer cars to do. It's been the summer, which has been really busy for racing. Um, our other classic customers and general customers have been needing their cars doing. And I've also got to build into the fact that, uh, into the, got to factor in, sorry, that um, staff actually want holiday. You know, uh, you know, rather selfishly, they'd rather, you know, take their kids away than, you know, work on cars. So, which I, you know, I do understand that. I haven't had holiday. That's not true, actually, I haven't had holiday. <laughs> So we have, but we have made good progress with the X, XJ. So we have run all the fuel lines. We've run all the handbrake cables in. So all the plumbing underneath is done. And we've had the bespoke exhaust made. So if you come over, we'll get the old lightsaber flyered up. There we go. Um, so yeah, so a lot's been done. So these exhausts have been made. Uh, we've literally just got two back boxes. That's all we need. Um, and the sound of that is going to be absolutely fine. And it goes and then it comes down up over the axle and then goes straight into one section and then all the way down to our tubular manifolds, which have been ceramic coated. As you can see, we've got fuel lines, we've got handbrake cables, we've got brake lines. Brakes are all bled. I think the brakes were bled before, actually. Um, steering. Everything's all in on the steering, and the steering's plumbed, so that's all in. So pretty much underneath here, all bar, there is a few little wires that I've still got to connect. We're, we're pretty much done. So once we get it up and running, then I've really all I've got left to do underneath here is uh, do the geometry setup and tweak the dampers. Uh, I've still got a couple of cables to sort out, but the gearbox side of things is all done. It's all fluids, we've got a clutch working. You know, we're there. So, yeah, I'm really pleased with the underneath. The underneath is basically done. A couple of you asked for some details on the underseal product that Tom's used, so here you go. Uh, we use a couple of different products. So sometimes we use uh, like a Swartz underseal with wax oil, but that doesn't particularly, I don't tend to use that as much as I used to um, because it never goes fully off and it's always like, yeah, it's always sticky and I, you know, don't really like it for that reason. Although it is a really good product and you've got the underseal effect and you've got the wax oil effect, so you've got rust protection in that. And then we use a 3M product, which is more of a stone chip, which is a two pack, which you have to mix in the bag and then spray it on. And that goes off rock hard like this. And uh, I think from memory, it was a 3M one that we used on this. Okay. So it's really, it's quite expensive. They come in little bags. It's like 25 quid a bag. And I think the underneath of this car will take eight or ten bags. So it's not the cheapest um, way to go, but I think it gives the nicest finish, the best protection, all that sort of stuff. So I'm quite, I'm happy to, you know, I like using it. I think it's a good product, you know, and it's as it's rock hard. You know, it yeah. doesn't, I can, you know, you can touch it and it's, yeah, it doesn't, you know, so if a stone hits that or, you know, hit the speed hump or something, I don't know rock in the road, boulder, that kind of thing. Um, you know, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to fare better than um, some other products that are out there on the market. So I, I, I really like it for that factor. And it's also very um, water resistant. So the other thing, the other factor is, is if you get water in underneath it, then you're going to start the corrosion process again. So it's actually quite, you know, over the years when we've been using it, I've noticed that it's, um, we don't tend to get water in underneath it. and you know, you need to damage it for the water to get in underneath it and then start causing a problem. So, you know, but obviously if you've hit something, you generally tend to know about it. You can put it up in the air and, um, and touch it up and 
carry on preventing. Should we get, should we get it down and have a look at it? Yeah, I know you want to have a look at, you want to have a look at the engine bay, don't you? <laughs> okay, come on, let's get, the, get it down. Okay, so most of the work we've been doing over the summer period is filling in all the blanks around the engine bay and um, wiring. I've spent a ridiculous amount of time on the induction system. So look, here we go. I think it's looking pretty good. So since we've been talking about the air induction, let's, let's, let's start with that. So on a standard car, let me come around here because it'll be easier to explain. Okay. On a standard car, we would have an air filter box here. Sorry, can I just, just for the viewers, when you say standard car, do you mean the XJC oh, or do you mean no, the XJR? No, 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 no. Period correct XJR. Period correct XJR that this engine came out of. An X300. An X300, 96, 95, that kind of thing. Um, you'd have an air box here. Yeah. The air would then be ducted into where this blanking plate is. Yeah. It would go through this plenum. Yeah. And then it would shoot down through 90 degrees. And then it would shoot down for another 90 degrees and then disappear underneath the charge cooler and go into the throttle body. Okay. So the air path was quite, you know, restrictive. So I didn't want to do that. And I know that if you take that out of the equation, that it's, um, you get much better airflow uh, and thus more power. Okay. So I wasn't going to, I was never going to use this. Yeah. But to be honest, I wasn't sure how I was going to do what we've done until we started making it. So one thing I did know I wanted to do was I wanted to turn the top of the radiator uh, into an induction. Yep. So this, this, what you're looking at here is normally just a 90 degree flat plate. But then you've got all this area here at the front grill where we can draw air in. And it's very, very difficult for me to try and get cold air in because I've got the washer bottle in the way. I could go in through the wing, but that was lots of fabrication. So I decided that we were going to turn the top of the radiator into the air filter. And actually inside here is a load of um, air filter media. Okay. All right. And then what we've done is actually got a grill on the front of it. You might better get a picture of that later to show you, uh, which is screwed, which we can remove so that we can take the media out and clean it and change it or okay. whatever. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that I could probably make one a lot quicker now, but because it was the first one we did, and we didn't really have like a, you know, I didn't have a CAD drawing or anything. Yeah, template or anything. yeah, no, no, no. We just sort of came up with an idea. This is how we're going to do it. And this is hopefully going to work. And that's what we did. So, and then the air comes through here, down through nice rounded bends and into our electronic throttle body. Made out of steel okay. and then black powder coated. Powder coated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then these tubes are aluminium. Okay. And then they're also powder coated if i had more time and if meg gave me more money i, I would have ceramic coated it because oh, then I, she, she let me ceramic coat the exhaust i thought you know well i didn't want to push me luck <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah ultimately i think for for the best efficiency i would ceramic coat that so yeah so we'll, we'll take it off yeah I'll, yeah okay yeah all right, all right. Don't tell her. <laughs> okay, so, and then one of the more, on this side of the engine bay, one of the more tricky things has been, um, is a lot of plumbing involved with a supercharged engine, with a charge cooler. So this is the charge cooler. So effectively there's a radiator in here, which the air um, goes through, comes out of the super, goes in to the supercharger here, comes in through this air path, and then through the charge cooler and then into the engine, right? So basically the air is being cooled by, by uh, water effectively. So there's an awful lot of plumbing to get in. Um, and we spent quite a lot of time just plumbing that up and trying to make that look nice, as, as nice as I could. It's, it's, there's always gonna be a lot of pipe work there. I mean, I'd love it if none of this pipe work was here and you could see the supercharger better, but yeah. So that has taken quite a bit of our time getting that right. Um, and then, you, some of you are going to point out that previously I had a standard coolant expansion tank on this car. We built up into the engine bay. There just wasn't the room for it. So we dumped that, that went, and then I've put in a race type uh, coolant expansion tank up on the bulkhead here. Uh, just because it saved room, made the plumbing a little bit easier. And um, yeah, it, and it was just the way to do it. So, uh, 
fuel lines are all plumbed in, so these are on like dash six, you know, high pressure pipe fuel line. The wiring's all in, it's done. Engine management wise. So engine management wise, this car is wired up. Okay, so on this side of the engine bay, um, we've got um, power steering reservoir. It all runs a bit close to the um, exhaust, but fortunately the exhaust is ceramic coated and we've put heat shielding on it. Um, that is the drive-by-wire throttle, which actually mounts on there, but I've actually taken it off because we had to sort some wiring out down here on Friday. Um, and then the other thing, I'll just grab it. Hold on one second. That's all right. Yeah. And then this is going to be our um, oil catch tank. So okay. that's actually going to sit down here. We've made a bracket for it, which is at the powder coaters. So that's going to sit down here around about there. And then this, these breather pipes are going to come in. Okay. All right. So on a normal car or a normal system, the breather pipes would be plumbed into the induction. And like we never do that on race cars because we don't want that oil going into the induction. So we always use catch tanks. So I decided that we were going to use a catch tank on this as well. And then what else have we got that's interesting? Ah, oh, you probably, can you see that down there, James? Where my fingers are down there? Diff yeah, yeah, go down there. So, got it. All right, that's the charge cooler pump. So that's the electric pump that pumps the water around the radiators for cooling the air, basically. So that's a big boy Bosch unit in there. Um, that's going to pump the um, pump the water through our aluminium radiator for charge cooling and try and keep the induction temperatures down as low as possible. So. Looks cool. So, but yeah, as I say, look, I've still got some more wiring to do. That wiring's for alternator, um, oil pressure lights and stuff like that. Rev count, yeah, in fact, actually, funny enough, the uh, rev counter drive is actually through that. So that will, yeah, that's another thing that we've got to wire into because this is part of the, oh, where is it now? I mean, I've got it down here, actually. Here you go. That's part of the standard loom. Uh, okay, and see. the... Um, so there's a wire there, I can't actually remember which colour it is now, that goes directly to the rev counter. So this wiring here is from our engine management system. Um, so that will give an output for um, TACO. So that's going to get wired straight into that, and then that will make, the, uh, make the rev counter work. So Tom, where's the Emerald ECU? Uh, it's on the passenger side. You might even be able to see it. If you come around the other side. Can't remember if we've actually put all of the stuff up. Yeah, you can see it. There you go. We haven't put the covers on yet because we're still oh, working. Okay. It's so it's down. Yeah, that silver see. box down there. And there's a couple of relays on the on the on the tunnel there. They're the engine management relays. And that white wire that's dangling around there. That's going to go to our um, inertia switch, uh, which is going to be the main power for the ECU. So it's going to it's going to have a working inertia switch and cut off. Um, so that'll all be good. So. As you can see, there's still quite a bits of, still a few bits of wiring to finish off. A few bits of, um, yeah, trim to sort out. But predominantly under the bonnet, again, we're not finished, but we're, we're very, very, very close. It's looking good, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. With it. It looks... I, I, I am, yeah, yeah, I am. And I've got to be honest, on Friday, when it finally ran up and we got the laptop on it and you know, it's not tuned, but it's, you know, we got it, we calibrated the throttle because it's drive-by wire, so we needed to do that. Uh, and just got the uh, ignition timing close so that it would run. Chucked a bit more fuel into it, so it's running a little bit rich at the moment, but um, it's only a start-up. Um, but it does start, run and idle. Um, we got it up to about 80 degrees, I think, and, uh, and we were able to rev it a little bit. And yeah, it's quite satisfying, I have to say. <laughs> so I was satisfying. Rather satisfying, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I was, uh, the boys were uh, taking the mickey out of me because I was genuinely skipping around the uh, workshop with a big cheesy grin on my face. <laughs> so, yeah, so uh, we might we might even do a little reenactment of that later. There you go, you never know. We really appreciate you taking the time to leave feedback about the wheels. It's much appreciated and um, it's great to hear that everyone in general uh, supports Tom's decision. I, I'm a big fan of the wheels. I, I, you know, again, it was one of those, I really like them. 
I think they're going to look good and they fit over the brakes more importantly. So there was that factor as well. Um, and I, I think they suit the car. Next up, it's high time that we revealed what we've been doing with the steering wheel. So here you go. Steering wheel, yeah. So the original steering wheel is actually in the boot of the car. Let me just come on. Let me just grab it because, I, you know, you've got to, got to be able to appreciate the difference. Here we go. So that's an original type steering wheel. Yeah. Big, yeah. Yeah. you know, big old, very thin to hold. Not doesn't really portray the boy racer image that um, that we're trying to um, you know that we that, we're, that we're doing with this car because it is a it is a boy racer car, isn't it? You know, let's face it. You know, it's not a it's not a you know it's not a plod down to the shop car, is it? So anyway, so that's what we've done. So that's gone. Right, so you want to see the new wheel? I think everyone else can see it. So. Okay, so right, there you go. Okay, so uh, that's a Momo free spoke. Um, yeah, it's a Momo wheel, free spoke, and I think it's a 360mm steering wheel, that. And I was going to say I was... I particularly picked this one because you can pop the center out of it and then I've had XJR embossed on it. But the reality was, was they're really difficult to get hold of these full stop and they come in various different types and styles. And I was just lucky to get this one with a center that you could pop out, which helped. <laughs> so, so really it, it was more a case of, um, you know, when I got it, um, I actually had a carbon fiber uh, type infill in there which I didn't like um, and I wanted to cover it in black leather and then when I went to go and see the trimmers and we were talking about it I said can we do something a little bit different and um, and he just sort of basically said leave it with me I'll see what I can do and I went to go and pick it up and that's what he'd done and I was like oh brilliant that's, that's cool it is cool yeah so so yeah I just think it looks good and it suits the car black leather steering wheel got a nice big you know it's got a firm grip to it you know it's it, it, it's got good girth, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'd agree with that. But it's, but it's a period correct wheel, isn't it? It's from the 70s, is it? Yeah, yeah, I would say, I'm not going to say, you know, it's probably more 80s, actually. But, you know, it would have been a, a wheel that was available when this was quite a young car. So, it's quite similar to Harry's as well, isn't it? Uh, yeah, Harry's is a little bit bigger than that, actually. Yeah, I think his is a 370 mil, I think. But, yeah, it's of a similar, it's of a similar style. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, his one is slightly different to that, but yeah, it, it is very similar. So, as you can see, I've still got, we've still got dash stuff down, and we're working on fuse boxes. We're basically finishing off the wiring at the moment. Right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that video um, and getting the update on where we are with the XJC. <laughs> um, and I promise you, the next time that we put a bid out, it will be running, and uh, you know, and you'll. Out of the engine. So, as James would tell me to say, please like and subscribe, and uh, we'll catch up with you next time. He's a good boy, isn't he? He's a good boy. Well <laughs> done, Tom. Well <laughs> done. Till next time. Yeah, cheers. Bye.